Hey Lemoners, how are you doing today? You doing good? Well, I'm not, because it's a very rare and uh, unusual situation slash circumstance when I can't find a little bit of humor in a situation. And I'm sorry to say that it's very hard to find some humor in this situation. Because guess what? A professor who spoke a Chinese word in the University of Southern California is now potentially being fired and can't teach in the fall semester because he literally said the Chinese word for that. Now, before you say, well, what is, what is that word? Is it some sort of swear word? No, 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 I literally mean the word for that. Like if I said that over there, I like that. That's what he got fired for. So he was doing an online lecture and we can actually just look at the clip here. I'll let you hear it for yourself. Break between ideas can help bring the audience in. If you have a lot of armorers, and this is culturally specific, so based on your native language, like in China, the, the common word is that, 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 that. So in China, it might be nega, 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 nega. So there's different words that you'll hear in different countries, but they're vocal disfluencies that's saying that, 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 um, 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 er, er, er. Two things. One is you can put a pause in between your ideas. So you go A, B, C, D. So yes, you could see that the word for that, or naga, in written Chinese or in spoken Chinese is nega, kind of sounds like a bad word that is uh, could be perceived as racist in English, right? Now the funny thing is, is that that's just kind of an inside joke. Even like all my black friends and stuff that go over to China, it's shocking when they first hear it. Like, we are nega, I want that, right? But it also at the same time just becomes like a laughing joke because you can't judge a language for sounding like a different language. It's, it's a, an ancient word that literally meant nothing, had no comparison to the offensive word that we have in English today. So this poor guy came under fire after basically he was trying to teach people uh, about filler words. I just use one myself. We say, uh, nega in Chinese can be used as a filler word. So if you can't think of something, it's be like, we are nega, 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 we are nega, uh, chao fan. I want fried rice, right? It's like a placeholder. It's kind of like, I want that, that, that. Oh, that thing, right? And then, then you remember the word. It's also used as just literally the word that. So if you point at something, you can just say nega or naga. Depends on you know your pronunciation or which one you want to use. Now, he used that to explain filler words that he has he's noticed in Chinese. He teaches in a university in Shanghai as well. So I'm pretty sure he has a pretty decent command of the Chinese language. But... After this whole hubbub, um, some of the students, I don't know the exact circumstance of what they said, but apparently it hurt their feelings and it made them very upset and scarred emotionally or something. And this is what the dean, so his boss, put out. Listen to this letter. Last Thursday in your GSBA uh, 542 classes, Professor Greg Patton repeated several times a Chinese word that sounds very similar to a vile racial slur in English. Understandably, this caused great pain and upset among students. And for that, I'm deeply sorry. It is simply unacceptable for faculty to use words in a class that marginalize, hurt, or harm the psychological safety of our students. We must and we will do better. So then he goes on to say that this professor will be replaced with someone else. Over the coming weeks and months, I have no higher priority than to work with Vice Dean Sharoni Little, Vice Dean Su Pyung Q. Sorry if I don't know how to pronounce that. And the other members of the Marshall leadership team to identify and redress bias, microaggressions, inequities, and all forms of systemic racism associated with anyone's identity throughout our school. I don't know if I honestly, I'm, I'm reading this and I don't know if this is an April Fool's joke on the wrong day or not. We must each grow and learn always to engage respectfully with one another while fostering and exemplifying the knowledge and skills needed to lead and shape our diverse and global world, such as courage, empathy, compassion, advocacy, collaboration, and integrity. Well, courage, that's interesting. How about you have the courage not to be offended by a different language? And you're gonna talk about a diverse and global world? You just said it's not okay to speak Chinese, apparently. I am deeply saddened by this disturbing episode that has caused such anguish and trauma what happened cannot be undone, but please know that Sharoni and Su Pyung and I, along with a full-time MBA program team here, are here to support each of you. We welcome the opportunity to have conversations with any of you individually. Sincerely, Jeff Garrett, Dean. Okay, so what about all those Chinese students at the University of Southern California? Are they not allowed to speak Chinese anymore? What about me? 
Am I not allowed to speak Chinese anymore? You know what, I have a good idea. Let's just ban all languages around the world because everyone should speak English. That's how we become more diverse and embrace each other, right? That's how we learn from each other. Let's just ban every language from every country except English because that's what everyone should speak just to make sure no one's offended. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous when this actually happened because I called a couple of my friends that still, black friends that still live in China. They actually, they couldn't believe it. Because when you go to China, you realize what a not p politically correct society is. And that goes, you know, has its own pros and cons for sure. But to see this kind of reaction in the West where you can't even speak Chinese in a university as a, as a professor, you can't say the word nega, which means that because you're gonna hurt people's feelings. You can't speak a different language because you have to worry that somebody's gonna be offended. I mean, literally, do you know how many words there are in different languages that sound offensive in different languages? Uh, think about uh, the word, okay, what about we do Chinese? The word be. So for example, if I say, be still my beating heart. Well, be actually sounds like the word in Chinese. You just offended everybody. In Dutch, if you say the word prick, it just means a dot or a spot, right? You don't call someone a prick, well, you do in English, right? And it's not offensive, it's a different language. Another one in Dutch, if we say the word lull, lull in English, like there's been a lull in business, that means male genitals in Dutch, right? A puff, like a puff of smoke, a puff of vape or whatever in English. Well, a puff in German actually means brothel. Another genitalia based word, well, there's a lot of those, aren't there? Is cookie, in English cookie, in Hungarian it means undersized pee pee. And if you're in the UK, you probably don't wanna say that you gave her a spank on the fanny. And that's just blowing my mind, like how far has this gone? I've usually not spoken out against matters like this, but when you're starting to like demonize a different language and not, be, not being able to say the words in that language because you're gonna offend people, when in fact probably the majority of people were offended, um, this cancel culture is just getting disturbing and disgusting. It's something that you know my coworker Winston and I have to deal with all the time. We're constantly trying to get canceled because we refuse to equate the Chinese people with the Communist Party of China. We love China. We love Chinese people. We love the country. We love the language, the food, the history, the culture. We love everything about that. We love our Chinese friends, our Chinese families, but we do not like authoritarian regimes. The CCP, the Communist Party of China, loves to try to equate those two things. In fact, Chairman for Life Xi Jinping the other day said that you cannot ever separate the party with the people. It's literally on paper now that that is what they're trying to do. And unfortunately, we're too loving and humanistic to actually do that. We're not going to equate a brutal dictatorship with a people that don't have any choice over the matter. And this kind of like cancel culture that they try to pull on us, this is kind of what happened to this poor guy who's literally trying to teach a lesson about filler words in Chinese. I don't know how this is gonna end up. Hopefully there's some sort of an investigation. We can't live in a society like this. Guys, we can't do this. If we're really if we're gonna quote this Dean who apologized to show courage and empathy and compassion and advocacy and collaboration and integrity, I think learning different languages might help to do some of those things. It might help us to understand different cultures and actually be friends with each other. And the funny thing is, is that a lot of people that just can't deal with something like this, that just it just frazzles them to death are not the type of people that even go out of their way to actually make those intercultural and interracial and international relationships with people. To actually have the, the fortitude to go out there and try to understand someone else's culture because God forbid it offends you. So yeah, my message this whole thing is I'm sorry to anyone that was offended in this scenario and I'm sorry to this professor that said this, but guess what? A billion plus Chinese people, they don't have to reorganize their entire language not to offend someone because that word isn't offensive. It literally means that. It's pretty insensitive and I think maybe potentially racist and oppressive to try to tell an entire group of people that they can't even speak their own language. Speaking of which, if you wanna know what it's like to live under proper authoritarian oppression, right now there's a pretty big uprising in Inner Mongolia. Inner Mongolia is a part of a province of China. Uh, the majority of people that live there are Han Chinese. It's been, they've been trying to move tons of Han people there. It's historically, been pretty Hanified as well, but there's it's also home to the largest diaspora of Mongolian people. And unlike the many of the 56 minorities down south in southern China that have kind of um, assimilated into Chinese culture, Mongolian people, Uyghur people, and Tibetan people have not done that uh, to the same extent. They're nomadic, individualistic, not collectivist societies like Han Chinese society. So. What the Chinese government has done is effectively trying to remove all of the Mongolian language uh, courses, Mongolian language uh, teaching uh, instruction 
So basically, if you're a, a Mongolian kid in Inner Mongolia, you had the choice. You could go. I used to live there, by the way. I lived there for two years. If you uh, go to school, if you go to public school, well, there's pretty much only public school, but if you go to public school in Inner Mongolia, you can go to Mongolian language school or you can go to uh, Mandarin Chinese school. And the reason is, is that Inner Mongolia is supposed to be an autonomous region, meaning that they have uh, their own set of laws. It's absolute bullshit. There's a few autonomous regions in China. It means absolutely nothing other than the fact that there are minorities that live there. Um, but it's supposed to grant them in the constitution like special rights. You have uh, the right to choose what language you want uh, to, to learn in school. And Mongolian people, typically a lot of Mongolian people will learn the Mongolian language school because they are Mongolian. A lot of them have ties to outer Mongolia, you know, the proper sovereign state. And they have their own way of life and culture. It's like I said, it's nomadic. It's beautiful up there. It's probably one of my favorite provinces, but they're trying to remove that. They're trying to honify the entire region, and that's facing backlash. It's not like when they honified the the Zhuang people down south or the Miao people. They had their own, uh, you know, backlash and all that kind of, you know, civil unrest and, and little skirmishes and wars and stuff back hundreds of years ago. But to this day, it hasn't changed in Inner Mongolia. Whenever they try to honify the region or make you know, push Han culture and instruction, all this kind of stuff. It's always meant with backlash. There's traditionally been a ton of protests in Inner Mongolia. It's just that journalists haven't been able to to witness it, uh, unlike in the Xinjiang region or the Tibetan region. And when I was there, I mean, my school went under lockdown uh, because there was a big protest in 2011 um, in, involving a farmer that was killed. It was huge, massive protests. It happens, but they keep a tight lid on this whole thing. This one broke a little bit more, and students are protesting against having to go to Mandarin-only schools. They feel like their culture is being completely genocided, more or less. Uh, parents are organizing protests, peaceful protests, by the way, um, to, to try to reinstate their language. And right now, the Chinese media is just either erasing everything about this topic or really pushing this propaganda that, no, 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 you know, it's not, not as big of a deal as it seems and blah, blah, blah. Like, we are one China, we are one people. And the reality of the situation is just not that. I mean, I think people like to homogen like have this idea that China is super homogenous. And in its Han regions, it's a pretty homogenous country. But there are complete people groups like the Mongolians that are very wildly diametrically opposed to Chinese culture. So. It's a tricky thing. I mean, if you, I feel like if you just let the Mongolian people live their lives, it's a fairly open, wide open place. People can have their nomadic traditions and, and all that kind of stuff and, and maintain their beautiful culture, but they can't because China always has, has to have a thumb on the entire situation. They have to have ultimate, ultimate control. And having a language uh, that allows them to have their own identity is exactly what the Chinese Communist Party hates, right? And we found that out when we were up in uh, Inner Mongolia and the SWAT team and busted in on us. You guys can check out uh, a video. I did a whole thing on Inner Mongolia and identity, uh, which I'll link here. So while the Mongolian people in China have an actual, proper, crazy, difficult uphill battle, which they probably will not win if any protest aftermath has shown in China, um, they're still doing it and it's still important to them. While in the West, unfortunately, and this is a massive generalization, but this one situation with this professor, I mean, we're looking at a situation where one word has triggered so much um, backlash. And I think that, I don't know if this is a sign of how society is going or where it's going, but I find it reprehensible that we would judge someone for speaking a different language. It's not the, not the way the world should be going. I wanna say thanks to everybody. Um, a lot of our videos recently have been demonetized because they're too controversial. For God's sakes, we released an ADV China video about spousal abuse. We didn't show anything. We just talked about how it's a controversial topic and the whole video got demonetized despite not showing any controversial footage. So it's pretty sensitive out there. It's tough to make a, an honest day's living off of YouTube ad revenue alone. So I want to say thanks to everyone on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Larry Six. You support me, support what I do. Um, and yeah, I mean, like without you guys, this would not even be a feasible thing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much, Law Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.